Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our next clone tool. This one, the next one up will be the Spot Healing Brush Tool. This is a little different from the Healing Brush Tool in that it expects you just to do small clicks. And it has a handful of modes, and that's not to mention your Multiply Screen, Dark and Lighten, Color, Luminosity, Normal and Replace modes. Um, these modes will be covered later in the semester, so we're not going to go over them right now. What we are going to go over are what these three options are. We have Content Aware, Create Texture, Proximity Match. The idea is that Content Aware is similar to the Content Aware Fill. Uh, let me give a quick demonstration of that. I'll duplicate our beautiful bees. Hum, hum, hum. Let's get this bee right here. And then we will go to Edit, Fill and we will do a content aware fill. What it will do is it will take a look at our surrounding environment and it will try to uh, create a uh, pattern out of that or so that you can't notice what's going on. Well, not necessarily a pattern. Sometimes it will just create whole cloth new things in an attempt to blend it together. But as you can see, it's kind of out of place from our previous one. So let's do this. I'll create a new layer here. And we will grab our healing or spot healing brush tool. Is that right? Or is it the spot brush? It's the healing spot healing brush tool. Had it right the first time. We're going to create a new layer and call it spot healing content aware. I think I typed that right. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to sample all layers. And if you'll recall from the previous video, sample all layers means that we'll be able to work on the, this new layer, this transparent layer, with take, while taking samples from the underlying layer. So I'm going to take the spot healing brush with the content aware, and I'm just going to adjust the size a little bit. It's an 80 pixel hard brush, hard round. Just going to click, click, click. Guess what now? Click, yep, click, click. And I'm gonna go back over it, oh, not over there, a couple of times so it can try to figure out what it's supposed to be. So it's still a little wobbly, but let's do a quick comparison to, I don't like that spot right there, there we go. A quick comparison to just doing it whole cloth By doing the spot healing brush, we're able to do it in small pieces so that the recalculation has a better idea of how it should behave. Now, keep in mind, if you keep clicking, it's going to keep trying to do adjustments. Additionally, if you just try to draw with it, it won't be too different from the content aware fill. And so you're going to sit there now trying to clean it up by clicking in different areas, which can be kind of a pain, but it can still have a pretty decent effect. Now, if we were to move on to proximity match, and we were to just fill in an area, we'll notice that it does things a little bit differently. In fact, let me make a new layer here. I'll just call that prox. What it's doing now, instead of checking the surrounding environment and trying to figure out what's happening based off of the selection, which is pretty small, it's taking a larger area, a proximity that you're clicking. So if I clicked here, I believe it's the radius of the brush out again, and it will try to fill it in. And so you'll notice that unlike last time where the content aware tried to do it within the bounds of where I was clicking, um, which meant that it had less to guess. This one has a wider area, so it's taking a kind of wild guess as to what to do. Now, there's a little more to it than that. The proximity match attempts to match the texture by doing this, as well as the color and the fade, which means if you just start painting over, you're gonna get some weird effects if you don't know when to use it. I have like half bees everywhere and things. So what would be a good time to use this potentially nightmarish tool? Look at this, we have some kind of horrifying effect occurring. Well, when you have something that has a texture that you want to maintain while still eliminating things. If I just click in here, the texture is maintained because it's pulling in from the surrounding environment. Notice in areas where it's blurred, that blurred texture more or less is maintained, whoops. But if you click too close to a more vibrant object, it's going to take a crazy guess and maybe not be so good at that. Now, in that case, content aware would be better, but it's not going to be too much better. Let me go ahead and make a sample here. 
This is the sort of place where you'd probably want to use the patch tool, which we'll cover shortly. Well, that's not too bad. Here we go. And now the flower is a uh, boom gone without too much damage to the underlying effect. Now, what would have happened if we had only used content aware instead of the proximity match? Let me make a new layer. With only content aware, it's going to take small samples and it's going to not do as good a job. It's going to lose that texture as I try to paint it over. You can see it's just becoming a washed out blurry bit because it doesn't have the whole proximity to realize that some areas are to be sharp and some areas are to be uh, blurred. It's just essentially a blurred area every time. So let's take a look and do a comparison. See how much texture is lost just using the content aware? So these two work pretty well together. Now the next one is create texture. Create texture is different from these. Let me show you a create texture effect. So if we were to click, uh, let me turn off this nightmare that I've created down here. If we were to click on create texture, we get this seemingly bizarre effect. Notice that we have this strange grain occurring. What it's trying to do is a cover up by taking what it thinks is the surrounding texture and filling with that. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, that seems pretty useless. Well, no, it's actually very, very useful in certain circumstances. Uh, first off, if we go in and use a much smaller version of it, we'll have a much better result because we're trying to blend in a texture. We as humans are going to notice uh, something is wrong pretty quickly. Let me shrink this down. So we've got a little sunflower. Oops, it would help if I had uh, uh, all layers going on and it would help if I had the same tool I accidentally grabbed the stamp it's the J tool to get the spot healing tool if you want that there we go now you can see it's still seemingly damaged but as I get into the smaller areas it does a better job cleaning up so where is a good time to use this human beings especially if you have a grain on the texture all humans have small blemishes on their skin uh, which can be brought out or hidden according to the light now using create texture, I can just click and the grain that exists around is maintained. And so you don't see a very obvious adjustment. Let's compare that real quick to a content aware click. And it will very quickly become blurred. Those pores are getting filled in. Let me show you a demonstration over a lot of it. Oh, it's not doing too bad a job. But after a while, oh, let's do the eye. This is going to be freaky. Oh, I don't like that. Why did I do that? Okay, let's let's not do that. Let's do the nose real quick. So as you can see, it's fun to play around with this uh, infinitely. We have some horrifying alien now. Let's bring her back to a human being. Okay, so <laughs> it's fun to just play with this forever. Uh, but it's important to have a basic understanding of what's going on with this. Content aware will erase things, but it will tend to blend things away. The proximity match will take a proximity around. Notice we're starting to get some eyelashes in here. Let's do the horrifying eye removal and we'll see that it didn't remove the eye. And the reason is that it spotted essentially another eye on this giant brush. If we brought it down and removed the pupil, it would start bringing in other textures and we'd have some truly bizarre stuff. In this case, the best fact for me at least would be the uh, create texture because it's simply trying to sample the surrounding texture and apply it over with the color. Now keep in mind that it does not do well with large spots. Look at how bad that is. Let's do the horrifying eye effect. And you can see that it's trying to guess the texture, but it really works best with small things. Now if we had a whole texture fill, that may be a different story. In fact, let's do a live experiment. I'm not sure how well this will work out. I'm just going to go ahead and do a uh, fill using a pattern. And we'll use uh, one of the same kinds of patterns that we were using in our brush video. We'll tell it OK. And I will rasterize this so that it is uh, ready to be edited. And I'll do that through a right click if I can manage to get in the space. Here we go. And I will rasterize the layer. And now I'm just going to take this create texture and I'm going to click. Ah, it's still messed up. I was hopeful that I'd be able to pick it up, but truly this brush works best on small areas where it will reapply the texture and try to blend it in. Proximity match will have a different effect. Let's take a look. 
And you can see that it tried to assemble a new texture based off of the proximity. Didn't do too bad a job. I believe Content Aware will try to clean up this whole thing. Oh, actually, in this case, Content Aware realizes that the surrounding area is all this texture, so it leaves it alone. Beautiful. What if we... Oh, we can even clean up the damage done by the previous brushes using it. Well, that's fascinating. I do love learning. Don't you? So the last setting I'd like to talk about real quick has to do with replace. You'll notice that that's not the same as the... Uh, as the rest of them, I'm going to use some movie magic and dig out my notes so I don't goof this up. Hold on. Move magic. Okay. So on normal, it tries to blend everything together. On replace, it should behave more like the stamp tool. With one exception here. And I'll let me demonstrate that for you. Just a moment. Unlike the stamp tool, it will try to maintain hard edges. Let's try to get this going. Doesn't seem to be too stampy until you turn off the rest. And hence the power of the sample all layers. Sure enough, it is just the tool. It didn't do any rep repairs. Let's try that on the face directly. Notice that it's trying to just break stuff in and it's having more of an effect as though we were using the stamp tool ourselves at creating some kind of Doctor Who style monster, which isn't really what we want. Now, this is supposed to work better uh, for images that have a lot of uh, these granular facts going in. So let's take a quick look at the sunflower. And sure enough, it leaves the sunflower more or less undamaged, just for fun. Let's try that. And notice that if you tried to use the Alt key to click, this is one other thing I wanted to mention, the Spot Healing Brush tool automatically samples pixels correct uh, to correct a spot with one step. To manually set the source, use the Healing Brush tool instead. Oh, interesting. So if this is the Spot Healing Brush, oh, here's the Healing Brush. Let's go over that next. But before I do, keep in mind the Spot Healing Brush is in fact a brush, which means that all the brushes that we had designed earlier should be available to us if we are willing to fiddle with it a little bit. But in my experience, it actually just has a hard round brush. Um, so, such is life. I'm hoping in future versions we'll be able to bring in other tools, but for now we're kind of trapped. But because it is a brush, that means that we can use brackets left and right to do changes. Maybe someday. One other thing we can do though, it is a brush even if we can't change it, hardness and spacing. I do wish we could do fun shapes, but I guess that that's kind of against the point of the spot healing brush. Okay, I will see you guys next video uh, where we will explore the healing brush tool and see what that one's capable of. Okay, see you in a minute.